Good morning, one and all. Um, this is Dr. Satya Bama. You know me by now and for uh, online. Today, the topic is about techniques of mandibular anesthesia. So let's move on. Now, like the maxillary anesthesia, mandibular anesthesia is much more trickier. It's not as straightforward as the maxillary nerve anesthesia, mainly because of the maxillary nerve being so simple and accessible than the mandibular nerve. All of us know that the mandibular nerve comes through the mandibular inferior alveolar nerve canal and then it goes, runs right from the inferior alveolar nerve foramen right down towards the canal and comes out and exits via the mental foramen. Then it supplies the lower anterior and the lower labial lip. Whereas the maxillary nerve is very freely available as posterior superior alveolar, middle and anterior superior alveolar nerves. Now, when we're looking at the branches of the mandibular nerve per se, now this is the um, three main branches that are coming out, your ophthalmic, your maxillary, and then your mandibular branches. So mandibular branches, you have the one undivided nerve branch that goes off to supply the nervous spinosis that is there, okay? And then we have the anterior and the posterior division. The anterior division gives off mostly, uh, we have all kinds of the muscles of mastication being supplied by the anterior division except for one nerve which will be the long buccal nerve. So you have the, the mesotric, the deep temporal, the buccal which is the long buccal and the lateral pterygoid. The posterior division if you take it is again having your auriculotemporal nerve that's your auriculotemporal nerve and then you have your inferior alveolar your lingual and then your mylohyoid. The mylohyoid being the one muscular nerve, all the others being your sensory innovations. Okay, all right, we'll move on. So when we're looking at this mandibular injection techniques, we want in our case, when a dentist trained surgery, under local anesthesia, we are doing procedures. Most of the time we will be doing to do either with the maxilla or with the mandible when the local anesthetic is being given. So if it is going to be uh, under the mandibular region, we will be looking at anesthetizing the inferior alveolar nerve. The inferior alveolar nerve as it enters into the mandibular foramen runs through the inferior alveolar nerve canal, which is right here, okay. Then it supplies the roots of each of these molars and then it comes out, exits via the mental foramen and then it supplies the lower lip, labial mucosa and the anterior teeth. That is why between the two mental foramens we can give infiltration techniques are available or possible. Whereas in the posterior region, posterior to the mental foramen, it could only be a block injection technique. Either you block it at the mental foramen region for the all the anterior teeth or we could block it at the foramen level to anesthetize the entire nerve. Now, as we are doing that, as we are giving an injection at the inferior alveolar nerve foramen region, we also tend to anesthetize the lingual nerve. We know that the lingual nerve runs very close to the lingual mucosa of the third molar present or the second molar that is present in the lower in the lower jaw or the mandible. So, if I am going to be anesthetizing the inferior alveolar nerve, then I also anesthetize the lingual nerve the lingual nerve and partly, very partly the mylohyoid nerve. Depending upon where my injection is going to be, if my injection is going to be at the foramen level, then I'm looking at only anesthetizing just the inferior alveolar nerve along with its mental and incisive branches. So the entire region of the mandible on one side will be completely numb, that will be totally numb. Obviously, if the lingual nerve is involved, then the tongue on that side, part of the tongue on that side um, will be, it will be anesthetized as well. Okay. But if I'm going to be giving you an, giving a patient an injection above the level of the foramen, okay, and, but not, but not high enough to go and access my, uh, if you look at this picture here, we will be giving the, here if I'm giving, I will be anesthetizing the, as exiting the trigeminal ganglion, we know the mandibular nerve comes up to the foramen obeyed and the maxillary nerve goes to the foramen rotundum. But if I'm giving you an injection right there, then the entire nerve is completely blocked. 
all right but if i'm going to give an injection right at the foramen level here only this is blocked okay if it is going to be closer i'm changing the direction of the needle a bit and i'm going to be anesthetizing the lingual nerve obviously the lingual nerve will be anesthetized as well so the inferior alveolar nerve and the lingual nerve go hand in hand and most of the time because of their close proximity and they get anesthetized now reiteration of the branches of this nerve again okay now when we're looking at these branches we know that particularly the anterior division okay the anterior division and the posterior division so this is very well explaining your posterior division okay the anterior division gives off branches to the muscles of mastication all the muscles of mastication okay so that will be your this is your zygomatic arch that is being cut okay that is a zygomatic arch that is cut we have the muscle here on the lateral aspect of the ramus of the mandible which is the meseta then that is the temporal line and that is a temporal muscle the superior nuchal line from the superior nuchal line to the coronoid process is the temporalis muscle then we have the um, lateral pterygoid coming down from the pterygoids down to the pterygoid fovea so that is your lateral pterygoid muscle so we have bux you have uh, mesetra deep temporal and the lateral and the medial pterygoid muscles which are the muscles of mastication now buccinator is a c-shaped muscle that all of us know that itself gets attached to the dental alveolus from as a c-shaped muscle dental alveolus upper maxillary base of alveolus to the lower uh, mandibular uh, alveolar base so that mainly forms the bulk of the cheek okay so that is that that is not actually involved or included as part of the muscle of mastication so the four these four groups of muscles are called the muscles of mastication and we know all the muscles except the lateral pterygoid are elevators the lateral pterygoid is the only depressor just a note on that any time you're talking about these muscles yes any time you think of these muscles you always think apart from the lateral pterygoid everything else is closing my mouth lateral pterygoid is the only one because of its two fibers and in con conjunction with that of the opposite side it does the side to side uh, side to side movement forward and backward movement and that is the only one that opens the oral cavity that's the only one that helps in opening the mouth all the others elevate or close the mandible 